there was a great video that CNN had put together about the differences between the way Fox News reacted towards the Donald Trump uh, conviction and the Hunter Biden conviction. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's really good, but certainly not shocking. This is a new era in America, and I think it goes against the ilk of who we are as Americans and our faith in the criminal justice system. In the end, this juror, jury of ordinary uh, people from Delaware were not intimidated by that family, and they recognized that this was a clear-cut case and that clearly no one's above the law. This is a very political exercise. And you have to say that it accomplished what it set out to accomplish. But I would say this about Judge Noreka. I think she ran a very fair courtroom. She ran a very fair trial. I guess we all need, what, to shop at Banana Republic from now on? Because that's yes. what it feels like. Yeah, a Banana Republic. For years, the Bidens have been able to escape any legal accountability for their sleazy, corrupt conduct. But today, their luck ran out. At least hunters did. Power is all they love. And they're willing to do anything to cling to it. They're willing to destroy the rule of law. The Republic has been wounded by weak lawyers and talentless political bloodhounds. It gave me a little boost of confidence in the American legal system, although they still have a lot of work to do to win me back. I believe that there was a, a conscious collusion of allies that came together it's pretty obvious with a private strategy to eliminate a common shared adversary. Hunter's going to jail, so Joe doesn't have to. Uh, and when he comes out, he'll be rewarded for his loyalty, like a made man in a Biden crime family. OK, actually, I think at this point you get the point. It's Fox News doing the Fox News thing. And the problem is, you know, when Fox News decides to do this, it carries on to all different kinds of other outlets and all they do. And I've been saying this for years, the right wing propaganda machine is so powerful because they stay on point. They stay on message, not just in one outlet on every single outlet that is a, uh, a MAGA apologist or a far right wing outlet. Any of those outlets that are uh, Donald Trump sycophants, they all stick on message and they all say the same thing. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Even when their original message doesn't work, they just keep molding it until they get to a place where it does work. But the, the sad part is, is that they could stay with any story that they want to because, you know, the MAGA verse is not going to eventually catch on and say, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? They're just going to roll with whatever story that they go with. So, but they do, I think, for their own satisfaction. I think they like to uh, mold it into a place where they're like, okay, try to argue this now and try to argue that, even though it's a ridiculous argument. You know, they they try to mold it to a place to where they feel better about it. And again, they just laugh at the people who they are telling this to because they know doesn't matter what we say, we're going to, you know, they're going to believe it anyway. So, and part of the reason too, and I wanted to play this, and this is a six minute clip, and obviously I'm not going to play the whole six minutes, but Sinclair, uh, Sinclair Broadcasting, um, we, Lana and I played a clip, it was on one of our very first shows about Sinclair Broadcasting, and they are a huge news group that own a lot of your local news channels. So whenever you see your local news, there is a good chance that Sinclair Broadcasting is broadcasting somewhere in your city. So why that's important is because most people, when they talk about what kind of news they trust, for some reason, they still say they're local news. Uh, but the local news is someplace where people used to go to a lot. I'm not really sure how much people go to local news as much as they used to. But there are enough people that still watch local news to where their views are being shaped by a group that is far right extremist. But they seem like they are fair. They seem like they are just regular and they want to report the news to you. But um, what I was saying was, is that Lana and I had played a clip of Sinclair where you could see 
all of the different broadcasters from a bunch of different syndications or syndicates. So they would play a broadcaster from one city. They play a broadcaster from another city and another and another, another. And they were all saying the exact same script. In fact, they molded it all over each other the where it was just a bunch of different screens with a bunch of different people saying the exact same thing. They're just repeating the script that is given to them that they have to read every night. So people across the country are hearing the exact same message. This is an example of what I'm talking about. They did it recently with Joe Biden and his age. Uh, I'll play a couple minutes of it so you get the gist, but watch this. The Wall Street Journal calling into question the mental fitness of President Joe Biden. His national correspondent Matt Gelka tells us the issue could decide the election. Wall Street Journal has published a story which calls the, uh, the mental fitness of President Biden into question. As national correspondent Matt Gelka tells us, the issue could be an election decider. Should he be on that or any ballot? The Wall Street Journal is out with new reporting calling into question the mental fitness of President Joe Biden. As national correspondent Matt Gelka tells us, the issue could be an election decider. As the Wall Street Journal is out with reporting, calling into question the mental fitness of President Biden. We want to know, are you worried about President Biden's mental fitness? As national correspondent Matt Gelka tells us, the issue could be an election decider. As they use the term uh, national correspondent Matt Gelka, so it seems like it's a lot more this is a distraction. Um, it, like, like it's something that, oh, this is a national correspondent. So we're going from our local news to now listening to this national correspondent. This might be actually a big deal. And really, a lot of people get fooled by little things like that. They get fooled by headlines that go, wow, this really might be a, a big deal. In fact, people get fooled by uh, parody headlines all the time. I had an idiot friend of mine the other day just send me a headline about Adam Schiff owing a little boy's family $7 million or whatever the hell it said on there. Of course, I had to respond to him and say, you are an idiot. Here's the actual truth. It was off a parody website. And it just but people are really getting their news this way. And it's really, really scary because I have said before, if this country, remember the movie Liar, Liar, where uh, Jim Carrey's son made a wish that you had to tell the truth for 24 hours. If this country were forced to tell the truth for, say, three days a week, the Republicans would win nothing. I am convinced of that. They would win absolutely nothing. And e everything would be exposed. But they have no problem lying to your face. They have no problem trying to convince people who are on the fence with lies. They have no problem getting people who weren't even interested in voting now into voting off of lies because they're going to use a culture war that might stick with somebody and go, oh my God, wait, they're all of a sudden uh, they're going to start allowing boys to play in girl sports, I got to go get registered and vote because probably half of those people weren't even registered to vote. So you're getting people to register to vote based on nonsense. And that is one of the reasons why Donald Trump, and in fact, that's really the main reason why Donald Trump has a chance because of the right wing propaganda media that is so strong and so powerful. And Donald Trump is the perfect foil for this particular uh, sort of um, destroying of the system. He is the perfect person because he has a way to resonate with people. And it's, again, I go back, it's shocking how he has this ability to do so because he is the billionaire, supposed billionaire from New York City, the brash tough-talking New Yorker who is fooling and suckering these people from Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, West Virginia, the people who hate New Yorkers. They don't, they, that's not their style. That's not their thing. But you know what else they hate? They hate people who aren't like them. And Donald Trump, even though he's not like them, he tells them 
about the people that they can't stand. So it resonates with them. And now it's more important to them that this anger inside of them about everything that they did not like for years is now being validated by this guy. And, you know, sometimes when you are a tough talker and when you do say it in a certain way, you now become a hero. You see it all the time with movies. You know, sometimes people love the villain. You see it all the time in like professional wrestling because that's basically what our politics has become now is professional wrestling. A lot of the crowd, they love the bad guy. They love the guy that comes out and talks shit and does the bad things. And that's what's happening here in our country. But unfortunately, it's happening with our politics, which is the worst thing that could possibly happen.